So I've been kicking around the idea of doing like a battle slash contest for SCPs for a long time now, but I haven't really been able to understand exactly how I wanted to approach it. I mean, the first thing you got to do is establish a type of contest. And today we're going to do, let's say, SCP-106 and SCP-173, simply because I saw some people talking in chat about it. We'll say that the contest is basically a death battle. Who can beat the other? And then we'll set up a location for the fight, which I think SCP-106's containment chamber makes the most sense. Probably makes up a little bit of what I've seen out of SCP containment breach and what's actually in the article itself. Especially since we want something where neither of them can get out. But with the parameters out of the way, we should probably examine just a few basics about their fighting abilities. Uh, SCP-173 is made of reinforced concrete. It can move when it's not in direct line of sight, and it attacks by snapping the neck. SCP-106 is a bit more complex. It has the appearance of a rotting old man, but it's certainly not that. It can take damage, but there's no guarantee that it's going to die by any amount of damage. It can phase through matter, and it causes corrosion to any matter it passes through, but only causes rapid corrosion when it passes through organic material. It can also pop in and out of a pocket dimension, so with that out of the way, let's see exactly what happens. There was a crack over the site-wide intercom system, a low whimper that built into a beautiful scream, and the old man tilted his head to the side. They were playing his song. I could tell. There were notes of fear and anger in that scream. This would be a well-seasoned meal. The old man disappeared into the floor immediately, and the researcher he'd been chasing made it into the waiting arms of the rescuing MTF with a story that she'd be able to tell for years. The old man began to come up out of the floor, into the chamber with the screaming man. If the old man had been paying attention, he'd have recognized the place as the containment cell he'd escaped only hours before. Or he'd have noticed that the door was open for the first time in years. But all the old man saw was fear, strapped to the table in front of him. The old man grinned widely, his eyes wrinkling as he did so, and then the scream was cut short with another crack. The old man stopped, opened his eyes. And there in front of him was a stubby-armed potato man with a painted face. The arms were wrapped around his meal's head, which was twisted at an unnatural angle. This thing had just interrupted his dinner. The old man finished emerging from the floor and felt an emotion he hadn't felt in a long, long time. Ray. And the door slammed shut, and the whole room began to hum as the generators kicked back on. The whole room was being magnetically lifted into the air. He was trapped. Here. With no food but this stubby, armed man. As the machines outside began to apply layer after layer to the outside of the cell, the old man slowly walked over to this interloper and reached a hand out to its face. But his hand didn't pass through like he expected it would. Because this wasn't flesh. It was hard, like stone. And worst of all, he felt no fear from this thing. Oh, the spray paint bubbled away, but it still just stood there. Impassive, uncaring, staring into nothing, like a statue. The old man turned away from it and looked around, and the thing was suddenly behind him. It twisted his neck. The old man's neck snapped, and he screamed. He turned his head around to look at the thing without even twisting its body. Still, it was impassive, still uncaring, like a statue. He pushed another hand through it. The concrete resisted him, but it gave way eventually. When he passed through it, it was hardly damaged. Again and again he'd pass through it, and again and again he'd make the mistake of looking away, or he'd have to pass through his own dimension, and suddenly he would lose sight of it, and it would break another bone. Oh, they'd knit back together on their own, but the pain was real. And eventually, the old man felt fear. And that was real too. He started to cringe away from the inevitable break, and his days turned into months 
the concrete that made up the statue slowly broke down. It crumbled away to reveal the rebar frame underneath. Most of the concrete found its way into his pocket dimension as he popped in and out of the world, and when he was done, he surveyed his work. He stared at it for hours. He couldn't eat this, but he could at least admire what he had done. Its arms were just long pieces of rebar now, bent around the central frame. They would never be able to hurt him again. It started to slip into the floor. And as soon as he turned away, he felt the steel pierce his chest, and he felt a rib break in two. Fine. He'd destroy the steel, too. It took another year, but the statue was eventually nothing but piles of rust and dust, and a memory of fear that the old man would carry forever. Anyway, that's my best approximation of what a battle would be like between those two. I mean, the old man's gotta win, right? It can be hurt, but it can die, and the corrosion effect it has doesn't work very well on inorganic material. I mean, it does work, but it's very, very slow. So 173 would have an impressively long run in such a battle, but eventually it would be broken down. What do you think? Did I get it right? Who do you want to see in a battle next? And what kind of contest would you like to see? Maybe this time it'll be a pining contest. Who knows? You can decide in the comments down below. And if you enjoyed the video, join these fine folk as patrons at patreon.com forward slash Link will be in the top of the description. Thanks for watching.